How's it going, Ospreys? TJ Tom Kunis here with another sports update and inside swoop. And right off the bat, both literally and figuratively, we're heading to San Diego, where the Padres continue to hold off the Dodgers in front of a 100% capacity crowd. And even though Tatis Jr. and Machado both played phenomenal defense, it was Blake Snell that brought the Padres to their 3-2 win after pitching five scoreless innings. Padres are now 6-3 and three against the Dodgers this season, and the final game of their series is tonight. But back to the Stanley Cup playoffs, where the Montreal Canadiens are one step closer to their 35th appearance in the final, but their first in 28 years. Montreal beat the Vegas Golden Knights last night 4-1, and they now lead 3-2. They will be looking to end the series in Game 6 at their home rink in Montreal tomorrow night. And finally, the NBA playoffs are down to four teams, and in playoff fashion, things are getting intense. Devin Booker and the Suns took on the Clippers in Game 2 last night, but Booker wasn't the one to seal the win. After taking severe damage to his nose, he was forced to sit out. But with .7 seconds left in the game, and the Clippers up by one, Jay Crowder gave an alley-oop pass to DeAndre Ayton and a tip-in dunk to win 104-103. Suns now lead 2 to nothing, and Game 3 will be tomorrow night. And with that, we are out of time. But as always, I am TJ Tom Kunis. Be sure to tell someone you love them. And I'll see you back here tomorrow. Ospreys, how's it going? TJ Tom Kunis back with your sports update on Inside Super 90. All eyes were on Denver last night for one of the biggest events in the MLB, the Home Run Derby. And there were power hitters from across the country, but only one would be taking home the trophy and the million dollar prize. Despite having the likes of players such as Shohei Otani, Juan Soto, and the hometown hero Trevor Story, it was Pete Alonso who came out on top with a total 74 home runs. 35 of which he hit in his first round. Alonzo also won the Derby last year, making him one of three players in history to have won back-to-back -back Derby championships. But for all of my Shohei fans, don't worry about him not taking home the championship last night. He is still the biggest name on the American All-Star roster. Not only will he be starting on the mound for the American League, but also as the team's designated hitter, which makes sense seeing as how he is now the league leader for home runs this season. In other news, the U.S. Olympics basketball team has fallen twice in their pre-Olympic debuts. The team lost this past weekend to Nigeria and to Australia last night. And while these games do not count right now, they still aren't the best sign to the team's future performance. But with that, we are out of time. So as always, I'm TJ Tom Kunis. Be sure to tell someone you love them. I'll see you here tomorrow. What's going on, Ospreys? TJ Tom Kunis here, your host for all sports on Inside Soup and 90. Game 6 of the NBA Finals, and the Bucks were going in strong with a 3-2 series lead. With the combinations of Giannis Antetokounmpo and Chris Middleton, the biggest question was whether or not this series had the potential for a Game 7. But the Greek freak decided that 6 was enough, and the sun set on Phoenix's Finals dreams. And yes, that pun was intended. After 50 years without a finals win, the Bucks will be bringing the Larry O'Brien Trophy back to Milwaukee. And honestly, it truly was all thanks to Giannis, who decided to match the championship drought and put up 50 points and 14 rebounds last night. Without any doubt, he was also named the finals MVP, and the Bucks became the fifth team to win the finals after trailing 2 to nothing in the series. While everyone in Milwaukee is celebrating, I am a little sad since basketball season has officially ended. But with the Olympics underway, there is so much more to cover, that is, if they are able to to operate smoothly. For weeks, I have been talking about how the COVID-19 pandemic has had major impacts on the already postponed Tokyo Olympics. No fans from abroad, key athletes forced to sit out due to positive tests, and a state of emergency in the host city have created a perfect storm to completely change how we will watch the games. Despite massive protests against the games and various health concern factors, the Japanese government has persisted in hosting an Olympics like no other. Some events, including softball and soccer, have already begun, but the official opening ceremony is this Friday. Hopefully, all the athletes stay safe and officials as well and the USA will be able to bring home a few more gold medals but one of those potential medals may not come as easily as we thought the US women's soccer team lost their first Olympic match to Sweden early this morning this is shocking to me as I'm sure it is to all of you especially since yesterday I was just talking about how this team was the favorite to win the entire tournament and was on a 44 game win streak I guess all good things do come to an end speaking of which we are out of time but as always I am TJ Tom Kunis be sure to tell someone you love them I'll see you here tomorrow. Hey there, Ospreys. TJ Tom Kunis here with your sports news update on Inside Hoop and 90, where today we are covering everything Olympics. The U.S. men's basketball team played in their first Olympics game Saturday night, and when it came to the final buzzer, the result was shocking. The 25-game Olympic winning streak for the U.S. was brought to an end in an 83-76 loss to France. This wasn't something that seemed impossible, especially looking at the U.S. team's chemistry. The U.S. men's team just hasn't seemed to become a team as of yet. Evan Fournier of France put it best when he said that, quote, they are better individually, but they can be beaten as a team. If the men want to have a shot at bringing home the gold, they're going to have to share 
shape up and come together soon. They face Nigeria tomorrow, a team they have already lost to in an exhibition match. And in other news, Caleb Dressel led the way to a U.S. gold in the men's 4x100 meter freestyle relay, which helped ease the sting of Katie Ledecky taking silver in the women's 400 meter freestyle. In 3 minutes and 8.97 seconds, Dressel and the U.S. men's team recorded the third fastest time in history. But the celebrations can only last so long as Dressel still has a brutal schedule of three individual events and three relays. With one gold down, he'll be looking for five more. And while he prepares, Katie Ledecky will do the same. After her loss to Titmus of Australia, her first individual loss since winning the 800 at the 2012 London Games, she still has the 1500, 200 and 800 meter freestyles later this week. And following the end of the first weekend of the Olympics, the U.S. sits at a total of 14 medals, 7 gold, 3 silver, and 4 bronze. We'll be looking to play catch up with China, who is sitting at 18 total medals, with Japan just behind at 13 total. And with that, we are out of time. So as always, I am TJ Tom Kunis. Be sure to tell someone you love them, and I'll see you here tomorrow with your Olympics recap.